Hello students, welcome to Investigation 10, April 20th, 2020. Remember how we loved investigation days because we didn't have homework or power-ups? So here we go. Ah, uh, please excuse the noise upstairs. Someone must be vacuuming, which doesn't happen very often, so I'm not going to stop it. All right, one way to measure an angle is with degrees. So here we show four angles and their measure in degrees. So we have a 30 degree angle, a 45 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. Now remember how I always told you that we can always tell a 90 degree angle by the fact if a piece of paper fits perfectly in, well, this corner, very nice. So note that a right angle measures 90 degrees and that acute angles measure less than 90 degrees. Okay, there's a 90 degree angle that is obviously less than 90 degrees. Obtuse angles measure more than 90 degrees and less than a straight angle, which as you see right here, a straight angle is 180 degrees, just a straight line. Here we have obtuse angles. They are more than 90 degrees. That is one way to look and tell right away that we, our angle is more than 90. So this angle is 120 degrees. This angle is 150 degrees. And there is our straight angle. A full circle contains 360 degrees as demonstrated in the activity below. Well, as you can see in your book, there's an activity where you make with your arms different types of angles. We are not going to do that at this moment. All right, so a protractor, I have one right here, and there is one demonstrated here in the book. A protractor is a tool for measuring angles. A typical protractor like the one below usually has two scales, one ranging, ranging from zero to 180 degrees from left to right, and the other ranging from zero to 180 degrees from right to left. By paying attention to whether you are measuring an acute angle or an obtuse angle, you will know which scale to read. So you always have to pay attention to that. When you are looking, this is less than 90 degrees. As you can see your 90 degree mark right there. This angle is less than 90 degrees, so I know I am measuring an acute angle. Therefore, I read the inside measurement, okay? Which is 60 degrees, all right? And not 120, because it is less than 90 degrees, right? It is less than 90 degrees. So therefore I know that I am measuring a 60 degree angle and not 120. All right. So to measure an angle, we use three steps. We position the center of the protractor curve on the vertex of the angle. So sometimes you have a little hole in your protractor, sometimes you don't. Also position the zero marks on one end. So here we have zero and we position that on the line. As you can see on my protractor, I have a line right here that I would use to help line up my measurement. All right, so check that both steps, one and two, have been done correctly, and then you read the scale, whether the other side of the scale passes through the scale. So here we go. Our angle again, of course, is 160. I mean, it's 60, not 160. It's 60 degrees. And we know that it's acute. It's less than 90. All right. So now we are going to move on to measuring angles. I'm going to give us some practice on measuring angles. All right. So here we go. Our first angle. Let's take a look. Let's put our protractor up here. Let's line up the line. All right, and that falls right below the zero. So I'm lining up the line, and as you can see, let's make this right on the line. All right, so it lines. Now I look here and I have 40 degrees. I have 50 over here, so right in between will be 45 degree angle. Okay, so this is 45 degrees. I'm measuring the interior of the angle, all right? 45 degrees. Next angle, guess what? I look at this one and I don't even need to measure, but I will do it as a demonstration for you. And I'm line up, 
Now, on this protractor, my zero doesn't exactly line up, but my lines line up, and that's what I'm going to look at. This is a 90 degree angle, which is also called a right angle. And when I have 90 degree angles, I put a little box right there to show that it is 90 degrees. On my next angle, oh, I can look right away and I can say this is going to be an obtuse angle. So I position. Now, because I know that this is going to be more than 90 degrees, I know that I'm going to read the outside of the protractor because this would be 90 degrees right here. This is more than 90, so I'm going to say that this angle is 120 degrees. All right, so I have 120 degrees. This is obtuse. I'm actually going to go back up to this angle and write down that this is a cute angle. Such an acute little angle. All right, now I can already tell that this is going to be an acute angle, right? Because it's less than 90 degrees with that 90 degree angle right above it. And here we go with my cute little angle. All right, and so I'm lining it up. I'm putting the zero between the space. And I am looking to see that my protractor is on 50 degrees, 50 degree angle. All right, now that is the first part is measuring angles. Now we're going to draw a couple angles. And in our book, it tells us to draw a 30 degree angle. I'm going to write that right here, 30 degrees. Oh, I better let you see what I'm drawing. All right. 30 degrees, then I'm going to draw a 90 degree angle, and then I'm going to draw a 110 degree angle. There's one more angle in your book, but I'm just going to do the first three as a demonstration, okay? So here we go. I have my protractor. I'm lining it up on the line, the purple lines. All right, then I'm going to go, and I'm going to say, okay, this needs to be 30 degrees. So right here, I have 30 degrees because I know it's going to be less than 90 because it's acute. And then I'm going to take my protractor edge and I'm going to put a line for my 30 degree angle. And I'm going to look again. See, oh, beautiful. 30 degrees, I know that this is acute. Now this is 30 degrees interior because it's on the inside. And we've learned about in and X. X is on the outside, interior is on the inside. All right, here we go. We're going to go for our 90 degree angle. So I look at this and I go, okay, 90 degrees right here. Now hopefully my line is fairly straight. All right. And I'm going to go right there. That looks pretty good. All right, and here we go. 90 degrees, I'm going to put my little right angle mark in there. All right, and there's my 90 degree angle. Now I'm going to draw a 110 degree angle. So I'm lining up, and I know this has to be larger than 90 degrees. So I'm going over here because, of course, it's 110 degrees. And I'm going to draw my line. And let's check this out. And here we go, 110 degrees. That is my 110 degree angle. So in your book, you will find that this is five, six, and seven. All right, we're skipping number eight. And we are going to move on to this fun angle up here. All right, now on this angle, oops, I better get rid of this piece of paper because I don't want to mess it up. All right, with this fun angle right here, I have a 60 degree angle. Now, this is 60 degrees on my interior, right? I'm going to write interior right here. 
Now, if I were measuring my exterior angle, if I were thinking about my exterior angle, I could do this two ways. So exterior is going to be on the outside, right? Now, when I look at my interior angle, I say I have 90, or I mean I have 60 degrees, and then I look at the outside number, and it's 120 degrees. Ooh, a straight angle. A straight angle that would be going out from here. Actually, I'm gonna use my tools so that it looks a little neater. My straight angle would go along this line, right? And come out from here. Well, guess what? This straight angle is 180 degrees. So my interior angle is 60 degrees. My exterior angle is 120 degrees. Add those two together, and what do you get? You get 180 degrees for your angle. So together, you have the exterior is 120, the interior is 60. So another way to find your exterior angle is to take a 180 degree straight angle and subtract the 60, 60 degree interior angle. So zero, zero equals zero. Eight subtract six equals two. One subtract nothing, oops, don't look at that, is 120 degrees. Voila! See how logical that all is? Now we are going to talk about finding the exterior angle for each one of these angles, okay? So here I have a 15 degree angle. This is 15 degrees. Oh, I'm going to just write that on there. 15 degrees and interior angle. So there are two ways that I can do this. Now, 15 degrees interior, but I could look and say, oh, guess what? It's 165 degrees right here when I'm going for my 15 up here. I can see that it's between 160 and 170. It's 165 degrees for my exterior angle. And guess what? I add 165 plus 15. 5 plus 5 is 10. Put my 1 up here. 6 plus 1 is 7. Plus 1 is 8. It's 180 degrees. I know I've got the right answer. All right, here we go. Oh, this is a 90 degree angle. I look at that right away and I can tell because I have my little right angle mark here. And I can just look at that and see that that's 90 degrees. So guess what? If I'm trying to find my exterior angle, what would be going beyond here on a 90 degree angle? I could do it the way that I had done previously. 180 degrees, subtract 90, zero. Regroup, 18 subtract nine is nine. Ooh, look at my exterior angle is 90 and my interior angle is, interior is 92. 90 plus 90 equals 180, correct? All right, my last one here that we are going to measure for this, and then I'm going to teach you about a new concept of angles. All right, I have a 130 degree interior angle. So I can look right here and see that to get to 180, I'm going to have a 50 degree exterior angle. Correct? Because 130 and 50 equals 180, which is a straight line. Now the new angle that I'm going to teach you about is called a reflex angle. Oops, sorry to leave you staring at my tabletop. A reflex angle is greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. So this is called a reflex angle. All right, it is greater than 180, less than 360. When you're thinking about 360 degrees, Oops, let's move that over, a full circle. So your reflex angle, greater than 180, less than 360. So um, sometimes I think about snowboarding because my son loves to snowboard. 
and he would try to do 180s. He tried to do 360s. He would, and maybe he can at this point. I haven't watched him snowboard in a while. But yes, or skateboarding. Kids try to do 180s. They try to do 360s. They try to do more than 360s. So if you want to think of a real world situation where you're looking at doing a full circle. All right, so reflex angle. Right here, I can see that I have a 90 degree angle, right? So if I'm going a full 360, what is going to be the size of my reflex angle? All right, when I'm doing a reflex angle, I'm looking at 360, subtract 90, correct? All right, I have zero. Oh, I can't, I need to regroup. So I have 16 subtract nine, which is seven. Two subtract zero, which is two. And I have a 270 degree angle. And that's pretty logical, isn't it? All right, so that is my reflex angle is 270 degrees. All right, on the website today, I have given you some opportunities to practice. So if you go to Google Classroom, I have given you three. Maybe I even added a fourth game. They are fun. Um, Alien Angles is pretty fun, but I thought that all of them were fun. So you can practice by going there. I know you don't have any homework today, but let's go do some practice. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.